Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back again to the Common Sense Guys channel. How are you all doing today? Sorry that I am not putting the pictures of my lovely beautiful face up there for people to see. But unfortunately this is going to be a nice quick video so I can just put my two cents in and just laugh at the way that Britain is at the minute and just laugh at the way that the justice system is more concerned about the safety of criminals than they are of the safety of the citizenry, the actual people that the criminals are committing the crimes against. But, you know, I suppose that that doesn't really matter too much, does it? You know, we have to look after the criminals and make sure that they're protected by some means, some reasons, some rhymes, if you will. So let's let's get into the actual one that kicked it all off for me. Although I did know of a story that happened a couple of days ago, but I've got a couple of them that I'm very interested in and the reasons why this is the way that it is. And the fact of actually having government ministers, Tory government ministers as well, actually intervening and in fact in some cases reprimanding judges that have a giving solemn advice to criminals while sentencing them. But let's have a look at what all kicked this off, shall we? So, it all started in Gwent. And that is a place in Wales, if people didn't know. So, Gwent Police do a prison recall post on their Facebook page, which is, Have you seen the 21-year-old man from Newport? Nothing wrong with that, right? So, we're appealing for information to locate the 21-year-old, and you can read the name, there's no need for me to put the name out there, from Newport, who has breached his license conditions after being released from prison on the 10th of December 2018. Taylor received a three-year sentence for being concerned, apparently, in supplying controlled drugs, cocaine, after being sentenced at Cardiff Crown Court on the 4th of September 2017. Due to the fact that Taylor, who was released on licence, breached their licence conditions, they have now been recalled to prison. In other words, he's breached bail for you Americans out there. He breached bail and now is being forced to come back to prison and whatnot. This is the uh, gentleman in tow, should we say? This That's the gentleman and how people are now... You could arguably say, rightly, are um, taking the mickey out of him. Now, at the same time, maybe it's not a good idea to, you know, troll him, pull him up on his uh, hairline and so on and so forth. Maybe he isn't. But the whole point of this is that the police... Well, let me just read you what the police actually put as a statement, as one of their top pinned comments, shall we? Please remember that harassing, threatening and abusing people on social media can be against the law. Our advice is to be careful on social media as you would in any other form of communication. If you say something about someone which is grossly offensive, oh look, Count Dankula in that little bit there, grossly offensive in the grossly offensive acts, or is of an incident obscene or menacing character, then you could be investigated by the police. Obviously, people still coming through and still basically saying you can suck a dick, which is just amazing on that side. I mean, I will link this in there so people can have a look. Now, I don't have a problem with that. It's social media. People take the mickey out of people all the time, regardless. The problem that I have on this is the fact that Gwent Police themselves had to issue a statement of recall for him not going back to license and breaking his bail conditions and his license agreement, and then making another statement saying that, will people please stop taking the mickey out of this poor guy's hairline because he's a he's now turned into a victim of some description, even though that he's been implemented or, should we say, arrested and tried for his connection to selling cocaine to people as a actual drug dealer but yet yeah, he's now turned into a victim all i have to say to that is ah bar him poor fucking him 
But the real story of this, again, is the fact that the police are threatening people on social media, stop with taking the mickey out of a criminal, stop taking the mickey out of somebody's hairline, or we're going to arrest you. We're going to arrest you for taking the mickey out of somebody. Once or twice, or things like that. We're going to arrest you because of it. Again, offensive subjective. So they're actually taking offence for the actual criminal to say, don't say this because we find it offensive, so we're going to protect the criminal on his behalf. That's what's going on here. But it gets actually worse because now it's actually gone on to YouTube itself, it's gone on to national news and international news that this actually happens. So let's go on and actually look on Yahoo News, international news for instance, and see what they actually have to say about this, shall we? So, this is from Yahoo News. So, just to recap the story, this is how they've written it, by the way. It's not too long, so we'll just quickly recap on how that they've actually done this. So, police in South Wales have warned the public not to mock. Notice the language there, to mock. They're not trying... Even Yahoo are suggesting that they haven't been taking, should we say, that the complete and utter piss out of them, the mickey out of them, hasn't been going and abusing him, hasn't been going off and trying to harass him. Because how do you do that in a picture? You can't go off and harass somebody that is just a picture. You actually have to go and find the person to harass the person, right? You can't just say, well, that picture looks blah, blah, blah. So now I'm harassing a picture that they're being arrested for? That's where it seems to be going on this. But let's carry on. To mock the appearance of a wanted man. Or they could face a criminal investigation for mocking the appearance of a picture. Because remember, if they were to mock the appearance of the person, the person would one, have to be in the room in which they're talking about, especially on social media. Otherwise, it's not directed towards that person, but about the picture of that person. But hey, I'm sure there's some legal definitions that mean that the police are correct on this. I can't find any, but I'm sure there is. The advice comes after the force used a Facebook to appeal for the information about, again, not going to say the name, from Newport, who breached his license conditions after being released from prison in December. Again, exactly the same thing. I showed you the actual facebook post in itself as well so we're getting there slowly i suppose so let's move down so that we can read this a bit better shall we so the 21 year old mugshot was posted alongside the online appeal shows the man with a receding hairline does that mean that now that yahoo themselves for reporting on the fact that he has a receding hairline does that mean that they are now part of the mocking harassment and bullying that apparently is going on to a criminal's picture and not directed actually at the criminal himself or a social media account of the criminal himself does that mean that yahoo are also being under investigation for pointing out he has a receding hairline for instance no Okay, so why is it only the citizenry that is now being pushed and is being arrested for grossly offensive takes, even though that the person that actually was in the picture, not in the room, they can't actually be offended by what's going on, but it's actually the police being offended for that person and protecting that person because of their perceived offensiveness of pointing out that he has a receding hairline? I don't know, guys. I mean, could we say that Britain is lost at this point? I, I think that we can. I think that we can honestly say at this point that Britain is actually lost. England, Wales, United Kingdom, lost. Just, just absolutely lost. But unfortunately, it does, it does get better. It does, it does get better. It really, it really does. So even Yahoo News themselves are actually reporting on the fact that it was mocking. And put into the fact that he does have a receding hairline. So, either mocking has now turned into harassment, which I thought that words had meanings and definitions for a particular reason. But, you know, I'm sure that somehow harassment turns into a synonym of mocking and vice versa. But, you know, I suppose words have some meaning to somebody somewhere. Like, you know, a legal dictionary, for instance. But, you know, you know, 
I'm, I'm sure that doesn't matter too much. But let's move on to the fact of an actual judge now being reprimanded by a MP on giving advice to a slightly overweight person that's a criminal that has just been sentenced. So let's, let's go do that, shall we? So a judge told a career criminal to slim down and get a job. Guess who was punished? Did you have your time? Well, it was the judge. The judge was punished. The judge was punished for this. So, Peter Hitchens, who writes this, writes, Here is a perfect story of modern Britain. A judge has been publicly reprimanded by a Tory cabinet minister for advising a criminal to lose weight and get a job. I don't know if the allegedly overweight offender took the well-meant advice, but I somehow doubt it. Having spotted the way power and morals are going in modern Britain, which, as we just see from the other story that we pulled up, it seems that we have to protect criminals' feelings more than actually dealing with the fact that they're criminals. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe in the idea of arresting and punishing the criminals but I also believe in the idea of rehabilitation that it should be a conjunction of the two but first of all you do have to punish the criminal for what they have actually done and then the actual rehabilitation can occur but you know it doesn't seem to work that way anymore it, it just does it doesn't seem to anyway he made a formal complaint that the judge had used abusive language and it succeeded. In other words, saying to somebody now that you need to lose weight and get a job, listen to that, because that's all that the judge said. He didn't say you're a fat, you know, C-U-N-T and you need to get a, a job, you lazy scrounger. He didn't say any of that. All he actually said, the judge, was that you need to lose weight and you need to get a job. Now that has now been interpreted by government as well as other powers that be, that this is now considered abusive language. So next time that somebody says to you that you need to go and get a job, you can use this and cite it and say, you're abusing me, this is abusive language. Because it worked for a criminal, why can't it work for you? Oh, never mind, it doesn't matter. I wonder if this is now also entitled to compensation. Well, if he has been wronged in some way in the eyes of the law, unfortunately, Mr. Hitchens, you're correct. He will be given that. He will be given something, some form of compensation. The judge recorded a Julian Malins at QC flatly refused to agree that he had done anything wrong. Yes, advising someone that he thinks that if you lose a bit of weight to become more active, you'll be able to get a job. And if you get a job, you won't be a career criminal anymore. You know, I don't want to use my name and I don't want to try and use that in every video, but it seems like I have to recently. You'd think that'd be goddamn common sense, wouldn't you? That if you lose a little bit more weight, you're going to be able to be more active, look for a new job, be able to be hired a lot easier and so on and so forth. Then if you've got a job, you won't have to look so much, at least, to the idea of at least being a career criminal. But apparently that's now abusive language. Trying to help somebody is now abusive language. Ah, but partly because the judge, uh, Julian Malins, uh, stood up for himself in this way, he was given a formal warning by the then Justice Minister, literally the person in charge of how justice is dealt out and how laws are going to be structured and how to present those laws to government to vote on them and so on and so forth. And Lord Chancellor David Gork, Mr. Gork, has since left his post, but is, I believe, still a member of the Conservative Party. And he's put conservative in a hyphenated point, as in an air quote instance. Because he is correct, the Conservatives are no longer a Conservative Party. And that doesn't mean that I want them to be the Puritans that they always were. But at some point, you know, I would like some traditionalist values to be, you know, conserved but that's neither here nor there i suppose at this minute in time so let's move down and see what we have further on this one the official public notice from the judicial conduct investigation office 
highly damaging to her job's career, says that. In reaching their decision, Mr. Gork and the Lord Chief Justice, Lord Bunet, took into consideration that the recorder failed to acknowledge the inappropriateness of his conduct. In other words, because he wasn't willing to apologise for giving what he thought was sound advice to a criminal that may be able to use it to better his life, because he didn't acknowledge that he f other people thought this was wrong and to apologise for it, he's now been fully reprimanded because of not deciding to apologise or retract the statement. Hmm, this is very interesting, isn't it? If you're not willing to retract your statement and say you're sorry, then we're going to bring down the full amount of the law that we can because we disagree with you. JCIO posted the reprimand on its website but refused to discuss the matter. I asked Mr. Gork to comment, asking him what was conservative about his action and in what way he differed from the most politically correct wing of the Labour Party. But he has so far chosen not to do so, and do not know the identity of the criminal. I don't think you ever will. But the point is, even if he is only a little bit overbeast, a little bit overweight, or, or whatever, the fact is that it was given as a form of advice, not as a way to reprimand the person, not a way to try and shame the person. But yet now it's been taken into abusive language and is now affecting a judge's career on whether or not he thinks that he can give advice on how the criminal can rehabilitate easier and quicker and assimilate into society easier. But apparently that, that, that doesn't matter anymore. That doesn't matter at all, does it? Not at all. And that's what worries me the most, to be honest with you. That really is what worries me the most. So let's move down so we can see a little bit more. Mr. Mallins, Judge Mallins, Recorder Mallins, 69, is an experienced barrister, tells me he still has no regrets. He says that the defendant involved, who is now in his 50s, had appeared in court 40 times and in 35 years had committed, or sorry, accumulated, not committed, but accumulated 60 convictions and served several prison terms. So, whatever was happening beforehand wasn't helping his rehabilitation at all for the criminal that's been convicted 60 times in his 50 years of life, somehow, including a lengthening sentence for GBH with intent. But on the day he come before Mr. Mallins, it was for a lesser matter, and he was told he could go free. At that point, the man interrupted proceedings to say a weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. Mr. Mallins replied, you had better not worry about the weight off your shoulders, but should rather worry about the weight of your body. The defendant then asked the judge to repeat himself, which he did. Fair enough. You know, it's in, re in re response, it's in retort, but... It's still meant as a form of advice, is it not? Even if it's said in anger. But, you know, I suppose that doesn't really matter too much. Mr. Mallins, who tells me he is just over 5 foot 10 and weighs just over 12 stone, says the man was so fat he had to be helped into the dot. He responded to the complainant by politely telling the defendant in detail that he needed to lose weight and get a job. He explained that this was for his own sake and for the good of society. What is wrong with that? Unfortunately, nowadays there's apparently something wrong with all of this. That you can't tell people that they need to do something better to be able to make themselves better. We just have to accept them for who they are and that's it. No advice is allowed to be given, apparently. So... As for the claim of abusive language, Mr. Mallon said, I reject that suggestion absolutely. On the contrary, the advice I gave him was sincere, well meant, and I believe very good. But yet, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what intention you had, Judge Mallins, Recorder Mallins. It doesn't matter what you think, what you intended. It matters what people think. It matters what other people are going to interpret what you said and what you meant. Wait, didn't we have a case like this with uh, Count Dankula, but now is actually being used against actual judges? 
to actually silence them and reprimand them for certain forms of language. How the idea of offending somebody and taking away the intent of the person that apparently caused the intent doesn't matter his intentions or their intentions of the person saying it, but matters about how the person felt after actually receiving those words. Interesting, isn't it? How now the stage from Count Dankula, or Mark Meacham, of how he was produced for grossly offensive material and fined, and now people that have should we say, their own ideas of outbursts, including people on social media that want to mock a picture, not necessarily the person, but a picture of a person, can now be investigated for somehow harassing a picture. Yeah, somehow that's how the Gwent police actually thought that this was going to go. Is now something that can be arrested for, can be prosecuted for. But even worse, if a judge actually says with well-meaning and well-intentioned thought that you shouldn't worry about the weight that's been lifted off of your shoulders, you should be worried about your weight and trying to get a job. Somehow that now is grossly offensive and that judge, apparently according to Conservative Cabinet Ministers at the time and Lord Chief Justices at the time, wanted to punish for him not retracting or rerunning or doing a u-turn on his statement but now he's being punished for that i just don't see where this is going ladies and gentlemen well i do but i really don't want to see it and britain in itself is now as you can see turning into a massive goddamn joke and that's what's really honestly worrying me a lot that Britain is turning into a joke. We care more about the sanctity and safety of the criminals than we do about the actual victims of the criminals. Because now what's happened is that the judge that was giving advice to the criminal of saying, look, if you lost weight and if you got a job, you wouldn't be convicted of over 60 different convictions, one of them leading up to GBH and so on and so forth, of in your 50 year period, you would actually be a more productive member of society and actually not have to worry about going to prison. But yet, somehow that mere suggestion of losing weight somehow has offended everybody and is somehow enough to be able to not end the career, but severely restrict the career of the recorder Julian Mullins QC, the barrister himself. But then the suggestion of getting a job also as well has now been thrown into the mix of now being caused abusive language. That now the judge used abusive language when actually suggesting that maybe if you lost weight and got a job, you wouldn't have to worry about the weight of your shoulders being lifted every time you come to a court proceeding. But again, I suppose that's too much common sense for the world today. Now with that being said ladies and gentlemen don't forget to like this video don't forget to share this video and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel but with that being said ladies and gentlemen thank you very much speak to you all again very soon bye bye for now take care